particular miniature episode of Star Map, we are going to be talking about a wonderful phenomena at this time of the year, noctilucent clouds. That's one of my favourite terms. Yeah, we're in noctilucent <laughs> cloud season. Though. This is something you love to, to observe, isn't it, Pete? These night shining clouds that you get. That's right, that's what noctilucent actually means, night shining. And the reason why they do appear to shine at night is that these are the highest clouds on the planet. They're about 82 kilometres up, so about 50 miles up, and that places them way up above normal what are called tropospheric clouds, the horrible ones that get in the way of everything else we try to observe. The rubbish. The rubbish. <laughs> and during the summer, when the sun goes below the horizon, so we're in darkness, we're in night time, um, the, they are so high that from their perspective they can still see the sun's light. So the light from the sun reflects off them, and that means they appear to be bright at night. So even when the sun is way below the horizon, these clouds are so high that the light can still reach them. Yes. That's right, it's basically reflected light off of this, it's a layer of ice crystals, and the ice forms around tiny particles. For a long time, didn't really know what was causing that. They were seen um, just after the Krakatoa eruption. So it was thought that Krakatoa had something to do with it. And it's now thought that the tiny particulates from volcanoes pumped up there. Even a spacecraft, which go through that layer, leaving tiny particulates, can contribute to them. But the main contributor are the fragments left behind when meteoroids vaporize in the atmosphere. And they act as a little nuclei for these clouds to form around. It's very different to the sort of water vapor clouds that we yeah, see above us now, yeah. for instance. Yes, mist and murk that descends upon us. Those clouds are very unwelcome during yes. summer, even though they never seem to go away. These are wonderful things. And if you get a very good bright display over the course of an evening, you can watch them move around the horizon. It's quite remarkable That's to right. see. That's right. I mean, the time to see them, they sort of there from sort of late May through to early August. That's noctilucent cloud season for the Northern Hemisphere. And the way to look for them is to look for them low down close to the northwestern horizon, typically 90 to 120 minutes after sunset, and a similar time before sunrise low down in the northeast. That's when they tend to appear. But if you get a really good display, an extensive display, what happens is they'll appear low down in the northwest, and then they will track round the north following the position of the sun below the horizon and then um, carry on all the way around to the northeast. So you can have a whole night's worth of noctilucent clouds. And they're known for being so very delicate, aren't they, in their appearance, sometimes mistaken for aurora. Yeah, they are very simple. Very, they do have a quite a bluish colour, at least when I have seen them. I'm quite sensitive to the blue end of the spectrum, so they look quite striking to me. And they're very dynamic. They do appear to twist and change over the course of 20, 30 minutes. And some of the pictures you've taken, Peach, put them together, you can see them really evolving in a, in a time-lapse yes. sequence. They really are wonderful yeah. things. They do lend very well to the imager more than the drawing of oh, Photography is great. I mean, it, over the summer period, that's when the nights are really short. So basically, you have to train yourself to go out and look for them after sunset and also before sunrise. So you sort of get into that habit. And, but it's only a few hours long because the nights are so yeah. short. You could, if you're not careful, though, you could spend all your night time observing on noctilucent clouds. <laughs> so why are they only seasonal? Why would we not see these, say, in January? Uh, because it's, it's to do with the temperature of the mesosphere where they occur. The temperature has to drop down below a certain level, which counterintuitively occurs in the summer months in the Northern Hemisphere. And that's when the, any vapour, water vapour there, goes super, super cooled. And then when it hits these particulates, it forms these tiny ice crystals. So that's why you see them in the summer. In fact, that has a relationship as well to the solar cycle because when the solar cycle is active, it's thought that that can increase the heating of the mesosphere and you don't get so many displays. So when you're going towards solar minimum, which is what we're doing now, then that's when we should get more displays to, uh, to actually go out and view. There was that wonderful photo in the Astronomy Photographer of the Year competition mm. where the colours and the, the, the filaments and the texture of the noctilucent clouds so beautiful and photographed over a beach which reflected Oh it. yes, yeah. that's right. I've seen yeah. the north yes. east actually. Well, Sun Sunderland. Sunderland. Yes, Sunderland. that's right. <laughs> a, a little cloud magnet had finally cleared and uh, had this wonderful display. I've yet to see a display that good. Uh, I think the, the really good displays are best seen out in the countryside away from light pollution but I have seen them a couple of times in Leicester but never that prominent. That's actually an interesting point you know um, because um, the moon is interesting with noctilucent clouds. When you when you go into the waning 
crescent phase. That's when the moon can interact with noctilucent clouds. The waxing crescent, the early uh, phases, don't get round far enough to the north to actually interact with it. But when it's in its waning crescent phase, when you've got the moon there, you'd think that would cause a bright halo where it's shining through noctilucent clouds, but it doesn't. It's, I saw this once, and it's remarkable. It's because they're like a thin film. So they just sort of sit there, and the moonlight just passes straight through, and you don't get any interaction with it at all. It's most odd. Well, let's hope for some good displays and enjoy this season of noctilucent clouds. I just like saying that. <laughs> <laughs>